see about um, people in the combined authority sort of beating Coventry. Um, and there came out sort of in our conversations like a, a shared sense of sort of uh, wanting to protect Coventry from, from being involved in something so big. Um, and someone described Coventry like being like the thumb on the fist of the West Midlands. Um, and there were some talks from space that sprung out of that. Um, and the geographical position of Coventry. Um, so someone was talking about how there's a green belt between here and, and Birmingham, for example, and there were worries about being swallowed up in a big urban sprawl, um, and Manchester was mentioned as somewhere where, where they think that might have happened. And there was concerns about the impact of things like the HS2, um, that the new train line that's being built. And someone raised the point that you know, that, that might not bring much benefit to Coventry because it's not something that's running through Coventry. And in fact, they were concerned that it might take away from the services provided in Coventry in terms of transport because there'd be less services. Um, but then another point was raised that Coventry likes to think of itself as a global city and you don't necessarily need things like trains to do business anymore. And maybe Coventry needs to think about how it's connecting with the world in other ways. Um, there was also someone that raised the point that there needs to be uh, more philanthropy and more people need to be out in their communities just doing things for the sake of doing good. And uh, we talked about spaces for people with similar interests to gather. Um, some people felt that they were either being shut or they weren't being well funded or that there just needs to be more of them and they need to be free and they need to be well advertised and they need to be accessible. And one thing that came up was uh, youth centres as an example. And we've talked about um, sort of the wards of the city and away from the city centre and how something like the combined authority could uh, improve the things that were happening in, in the wards that were outside of the city centre. And then uh, someone talked about sort of the need to find a way to get groups that have similar interests in the city, whether that's young people, or older people or whatever that may be, to gravitate, to gravitate together and to want to do that of their own will instead of sort of being enticed to go to something. Um, and how, how do you do that? How do you do that without the council sort of prescribing from the top down how that's done? How do you get people in their communities to want to do that and to want to work together and to want to meet their neighbours and the people in the next street and do good things? Um, also talked about the city centre and what's there for people that live in these wards. Um, and I think we talked about Falls Hill and Radford and uh, the example of some young people there like not really wanting to come to the city centre and not having a reason to do that. How do you make the city centre a space that people all around the city want to come to and, and want to meet? Um, and we also talked about Google and uh, someone said that people know how to Google for stuff like people can use Google but they don't know how to Google for things in their community and how to you know to find the space that people meet so so what can we do there let's have, let's have a positive think about that I think I do like the idea of a Google for your community. Um, Millicent. We had uh, Louise Bennett, first of all, from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and then David Williams uh, from Coventry Cathedral. Uh, we had a lot of the same issues um, that came up, in particular looking at the importance of maintaining the identity uh, of Coventry. Um, whether a combined authority would help with that or not was uh, argued. There were, I felt, perhaps younger people felt more that there would be a stronger world. Um, it was, Coventry would have a stronger place in the world if it were a part of a larger combined authority. Uh, and other people felt that Coventry, they said, we'd lose our identity, we'd be subsumed in something bigger. So those are mainly the two arguments. Um, what solutions people came up with um, for those problems were that Coventry should assert its identity, should build on the very, very rich history and not allow that to be lost. Uh, and that also there could be scope for some regeneration of Coventry to make it a place that people would want to go to, to put it on the map, not just for its history, but also for its future. So we had suggestions that there could be a redevelopment of the, of the shopping facilities. We also had somebody saying that the new Friargate development is uninspiring. Um, but we wanted something that would bring people, like Birmingham, something new and exciting, some kind of architectural thing that would make people want to come to Coventry to feel it was a place of the future as well as a place of the past. Um, there was also a suggestion that perhaps that could be in the shape of student accommodation to augment the um, universities here to make young people, students, want to come to Coventry and to specifically pick Coventry, not Birmingham, um, so that also the industries could be nurtured, could, we could have people coming here, studying here, jobs here, feeding into that, and therefore also growing uh, Coventry as it is and keeping it with its identity on the map. Um, 
I had a couple of quotes here saying uh, we'd have more power to show our identity and a stronger voice and a combined authority. And then I had somebody saying exactly the opposite. So I think there was, uh, there was some good discussion and that importance of maintaining identity was really, really important. Um, and there was just discussion about how that could best be done. Otherwise, same sorts of things uh, as the other tables. That's great. Thank you very much. Well, while uh, you were hearing those, I was looking back at that wall that we put the words up right at the start of the session. And one of the things that really struck me is that this is a place that is rich in connections. Um, so it isn't just uh, a binary choice between um, Birmingham and Warwickshire or even you know, a binary choice between England and the rest of the world. You know, diversity, connectivity, connections are all up on, all up on that wall. And I think one of the things that is really interesting to me is um, how much people felt that the combined authority decision was a, was a huge epochal choice, was like a, a, vote, a Coventry's going to be like this or it's going to be like that on the basis of that choice. Um, one of the things I'd come back to that I said right at the start was that combined authorities, like any local government uh, thing, is a tool. It's a tool for making a city or making a place like the people in it want to be. And so I think the question, the question back to you for this next session is, well, what's the thing that you want Coventry to be like? And it's a 90-minute discussion. Now, I timed myself over lunch, and it takes about 1.3 seconds to say I don't want a combined authority. So can you use the other 89 minutes, 58.5 seconds, um, to think about why and what and how, and what's the purpose of any of the things that we're going to do, whether it's a combined authority uh, whether it's not a combined authority, what's the way in which you want Coventry to be? Because some of the things that came out for me in that conversation, on the various conversations I heard, were as much about democracy, I mean, like Kelly said, with democratic society, I, my ears prick up when I hear the word democracy, but were about public voice and about control and about the future of the city. So I want to get some of those ideas out there as well, because whatever happens as a result of this broader consultation, whatever decision the council makes, they want to make it on the basis of an understanding of where Coventry wants to be, rather than any sort of dry discussion of political structure. So I think that part of the next session, I'm going to ask the facilitators, John is going to facilitate the purple table over there, I'm going to ask the facilitators to draw out from you your ideas, thoughts and comments, absolutely. But also, on those four levels of how you live in your city, you live in your neighbourhood, what's the, what's the place around you, what are the people around you and how do you want that to be? What are your thoughts about that? Then you live in the city. You know, we've talked about the city centre, but actually most people don't live in the city centre. They live out of the city centre. What's the, what is the city as the city to you, and what do you want that to be? And then Coventry in its region, and I don't mean there, you know, the, just the geographical. I mean Coventry as in relation to London, Coventry in relation to the rest of the country, Coventry in relation to Birmingham and to Warwickshire. What's, that, what's the things that you want to draw out of that? And finally, Coventry in the world. I mean, we heard uh, particularly from, um, the, uh, from one of the tables we're talking about you know, the role of the cathedral and the role of Coventry as a peace city being something that really has an impact in the world and which, people, and which people know of and know the consequences of. So I want, again, to try and draw some of those thoughts out because actually all of those will end up, I think, connected. I think you won't find that, there's, that Coventry is a peace and reconciliation city at global level and a hostility and division city at neighbourhood level. You know, I think one of the things that we're trying to get, one of the things that, we, that gives a city its real identity is that it's, it's putting those values all the way through it from, from neighbourhood up to, up to global level. So those are the sorts of things I want you to talk about. And the facilitators are there to listen and to, and to shape the conversation. But by the end of it, I would like, if possible, for you to have come up with some thoughts at each of those different levels. And also ideas, suggestions, comments for the council, comments for the, you know, for the other people in the room and for the people who've, who've been here as expert witnesses as well. So that's how we're going to spend the rest of our time together. I'm going to let it run for 45 minutes and then we'll see how the conversations are going. If it feels like we're reaching a couple of conclusions or there's some really common points coming out, I'll draw those out so that you can see what other tables are talking about, you know, not just kind of sitting in the same conversation. If the conversation is really racing ahead and people just want to be left alone, I will also leave you alone because I don't want to disrupt a good conversation. But the output of this, as well as all of the words that you've written on the wall, as well as all of the notes that our excellent facilitators have taken, the outcome of this is really about your sense of what Coventry needs to be in the future and how, that can be t how, how we can get there from the place that Coventry is now. So I hope uh, you have good conversations, and we'll, we'll run 45 minutes. There will also be a coffee break halfway through, so you can nip out and, uh, and get some coffee and refresh yourselves. 
Any questions between, yeah, before we start that session about how we're going to do it? Sorry? Nope. Well, the, I mean, I'm sure, that, I'm sure the council has got its own thought. I mean, I'm sure, I don't think the council is sitting there going, well, we've got no opinion whatsoever until suddenly they have an opinion. But at the same time, the purpose of this session is to try and give them a sense of what any decision has to be taken for, as well as what that decision should be. So that's the purpose of this conversation. And so, yeah, I, I think that, personally, I think that's the, that's the important thing to get out of this. Yes? I think there should be more, a bit more time uh, allowed for reporting back, giving more feedback. Because I'm mean, just looking on the agenda, and there's only half an hour. I think, well, let's see how the discussions go. I mean, the most important thing for me is to make sure that everyone at the, everyone at the table has, feels they have had something to say, which reminds me of the other thing I was going to say, thank you very much, which was the earlier sessions were Q&A, right, question and answer. And if you don't have questions, that's fine, don't ask questions. This is an opinion session. Everyone has an opinion. Really, everyone has an opinion. This is Coventry. It says on the wall, everyone has an opinion. So um, I do want to make sure that everyone has had a chance to feed in and the facilitators will, in a loving and gentle way, be prodding you to make sure that you have made a contribution. So, um, so please do. But if it, again, we'll see at 45 minutes how the conversation is running. If people want to talk more on tables, that's fine. If, we want, if people want to try and get some feedback and spend a bit, bit longer feeding back into the room, that's fine too. We'll, we'll play it by ear. Okay, get talking.